This is Jared Horak for TheRunawayHorse.com and welcome back to another edition of the Kentucky Derby 2020 report for The Runaway Horse. Now in, in this edition I'm going to talk about the prep races that Churchill Downs just announced. They're going to be points races for the Kentucky Derby. Now let's, let's toss up those uh, races right now. As you can see uh, on the screen uh, there's a number of, of points races that Churchill is now offering. On the East Coast the Haskell Stakes uh, is going to be a Kentucky Derby points race. It's going to be worth 100 points to the winner, 40 for second, 20 for third, and 10 for fourth. That one will be run on July 18th at Monmouth Park. Monmouth also going to be offering the Pegasus Stakes as a Derby points race, 20 points to the winner. That one's on August 15th. Now in a typical year, the Pegasus is a prep for the Haskell, but this is anything but a typical year. With the coronavirus pandemic, we've had a lot of cancellations and, and readjustments of these races. Uh, Monmouth Park summer meet is going on as scheduled and Haskell is going to be run on July 18th, Pegasus on August 15th and they're both Derby points races. Now over to the Midwest, uh, the Matt Wynn Stakes at Churchill Downs is going to be the next Kentucky Derby points race scheduled. That one will be run on May 23rd, 50 points to the winner. Now originally when Churchill Downs said they were going to run the Matt Wynn, they said it was going to be 10 points to the winner, but they've updated uh, the list since then. Now it's a 50 point race with 20 points for second, 10 for third, and five for fourth. So 85 total points for the top four finishers. And the big name right now uh, for the Matt win is Max Field. And Max Field, he went two for two as a juvenile. Uh, he, he broke his maiden impressively from off, off the pace in his career debut. Second career start in the Breeders' Futurity. Again, strong from off the pace. He won easily, beating Gouverneur Morris, among others in there. And Max Field had surgery. He missed the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, he's come back this year now. This will be his first start back. He's had numerous workouts and now he's finally get to get ready to get back on uh, on track and, and, and run some races. Now the Indiana Derby is the next one but there's no date right now but they're going to run that one and they're listing that as uh, 20 points to the winner. Uh, Bluegrass Stakes. Keeneland had to cancel their spring meet because of the coronavirus. They want to run a summer meet at Keeneland and they want to continue to run the Bluegrass Stakes. 100 points to the winner there. And then the Ellis Park Derby at Ellis Park later this summer. Again, another race that doesn't have a date yet. 50 points to the winner. Now the West Coast, uh, they have three races. Two of them have dates. The first race of uh, the Santa Anita Derby is going to be uh, the Derby points race coming up in, on June 6th at Santa Anita Park. 100 points to the winner. 40 for second, 20 for third, and 10 for fourth. Authentic and Honor AP, your first and second place finishers in the San Felipe Stakes at Santa Anita Park. They're going to be back in a rematch most likely in the Santa Anita Derby. Now Authentic for Bob Baffert, a speed horse, probably going to go out there and try to go wire to wire in the Santa Anita Derby. Honor AP, he's versatile for trainer John Sheriffs. He's got a nice pedigree. He's got a lot of upside. He needed that last race in the San Felipe and I wouldn't be surprised if he moved forward. Now Honor AP might right now is my top Kentucky Derby a 2020 contender uh, on my exceptional 11 derby list and, and you can see that you can read that at the runaway horse I, I have the description in the description of this video I have the links provided uh, so you can go over and, and look at the uh, links provided click there you, it'll take you to my Kentucky Derby page at the runaway horse.com you can read all of my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports and videos uh, they're all posted there now the Los Alamitos Derby the second race uh, that's going to be run uh, for the points races in Southern California at Los Alamitos Racecourse on July 4th, 20 points to the winner there. And then finally, Del Mar's uh, Shared Belief Stakes, 50 points to the winner. There's no date yet, but if you look at the dates of the Santa Anita Derby, the Los Alamitos Derby, and then the Kentucky Derby, the Santa Anita Derby on June 6th, Los Alamitos Derby on July 4th, the Kentucky Derby is the first Saturday in September, September 5th. So the Shared Belief Stakes, most likely, if you look at the timing of all those races is probably going to be run on August 1st or August 8th, which would put it either five weeks or four weeks uh, prior to the Kentucky Derby. So that seems to be uh, the most likely uh, placement on the calendar for the shared belief stakes. Now remember that nothing's etched in stone here. These are the races right now that Churchill has added to the calendar since the Kentucky Derby has been moved from the first Saturday in May to the first Saturday in September. Uh, everything's upside down this year due to the coronavirus. And these are the points races right now. Now they could add or, or take away some points in some of these races. Uh, of course, we could be adding some more points races down the road. Uh, we're not quite sure of, all, all, of everything, how it's gonna play out right now. 
Now the Preakness Stakes and the Belmont Stakes, they don't have dates yet. They, as I said, the, the Kentucky Derby, the first Saturday in September, on September 5th, but no date for the Preakness yet. Now the Preakness, they're supposed to announce of the Preakness, uh, the date that they're gonna run the Preakness this Saturday on May 15th. So what we should know soon of the date of the Preakness. Now, there have been rumors that they were gonna run the Preakness on October 3rd, which would put it a, a few weeks, obviously after the, the Kentucky Derby, uh, but not two weeks after its normal spot. So we'll have to see where they end up placing the Preakness on the calendar. Uh, sometime in July and August were also possible, but, but th that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense as, as much as anything right now, October 3rd. And then the Belmont Stakes, we haven't heard anything yet. New York has not re resumed racing yet. Uh, so uh, we don't know when the Belmont Stakes is going to be run at this point, but we know it's not going to be run on, on June 6th, that's, that's for sure. That's the date of the Santa Anita Derby, and, and they're just not going to run it at, at that time. We'll just have to see when uh, the Belmont Stakes will be run, and, and we'll learn more about that when New York Racing gets started again. Uh, so that's the catch-up on uh, the Kentucky Derby Road. Let's look at the Kentucky Oaks Road now, and we'll pull up uh, the Oaks Trail right now. The Delaware Oaks, um, 50 points to the winner on the East Coast, and then the Monmouth Oaks, also worth 50 points. In the Midwest, we have the Dogwood Stakes at Churchill Downs, the Indiana Oaks at Indiana Grand, both worth 20 points to the winner, the Ashland Stakes at Keeneland worth, is going to be worth 100, and the Beaumont Stakes, also at Keeneland, is going to be worth 20. And then on the West Coast, the Santa Anita Oaks, 100 points uh, on the road to the Kentucky Oaks. Now, it's not a points race, but coming up on Friday, May 14th, Tonalist Shape is going to run in the Hollywood Wildcat Stakes. Now, Tonalist Shape went five for five of the beginner career with a couple graded stakes wins. And then in the Gulfstream Park Oaks last time, she disappointed. Uh, so now they're going to try to get her back on track. Now, that was a strange race at Gulf, Gulfstream Oaks. Uh, there was a lot of speed on, on paper. None of the horses showed speed. Tonal the Shape was one that was supposed to show speed, but she was wide, spinning her heels. She never really got involved. Um, and, and then um, Swiss Skydiver ended up wiring the field there at slow pace. And then Swiss Skydiver came back and won the fantasy stakes. So I would not be surprised if Tonal the Shape ran a much better race in the Hollywood Wildcat stakes. And then they're probably going to jump her in another points race after that at, at some point. Uh, so now we've caught up on the Oaks and Derby Trail, and some tracks are starting to run again. Churchill Downs starts Saturday, May 16th. San Anita is back in action Friday, May 15th. Golden Gate Fields just started on, on May 14th. So we're starting to see some tracks come back and, and, and get back in action now. But as I mentioned, Mar Maryland and, 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 um, and New York, they're not back yet. Uh, Maryland sh prob should be back soon. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if, if New York, uh, a little bit slower than some of the other tracks because they had a lot of coronavirus cases in New York. Uh, so New York would be a little bit slower, but I would expect that Maryland's going to be uh, back up and running again soon. Now, another thing that I'm going to add to these uh, derby reports, um, I'm going to talk about at least profile one horse that's on my list. And a horse that I'm going to talk about today is Max Player. Max Player has been on my list for quite some time. It's been in my exceptional 11, uh, floating around in the middle towards the bottom. The one that I'm expecting uh, big things from later this year. Now, Max Player has only run three times in the career, two wins and a second. And uh, a, a son of honor code, a uh, fool's in love is the dam, uh, not for love, the, the dam sire. And a fool's in love was a Maryland bred and ran in multiple stakes races, a lot of stamina, uh, on, on both sides of the pedigree here. So I'm not concerned too much about distance for Max Player. He's just gonna have to get faster, but he has gotten faster in each start. His first start at Parks, finished second, and then they stretched him out second time out at Parks late last year, broke his maiden, earned a, a better speed figure, and then he moved forward nicely. In his first start against winners in the Withers Stakes at Aqueduct on February 1st, he was my top choice there. He rallied nicely from off the pace. Now that was in the deep field there, uh, but that was his first start against winners. It was a mile and an eighth. He proved he could get a distance. He was finishing nicely at the end. And it's, there's a possibility, I, I would think, that maybe the Matt Wynn Stakes would be a race they're, they're going to run, run this horse in. Uh, Linda Rice is the trainer. Uh, the workout schedule, they've been uh, treading pretty lightly with this one. On, on April 1st, uh, he, he worked at Belmont. Uh, six furlongs and 116, uh, but then he, he started actually on, on um, March 18th. So every other week he, since March 18th, he's been, he's been working. So March 18th, April 1st, and then April 15th he worked again on the Belmont training track, April 29th, and then May 12th was his last work, six furlongs and 114 and change. So they've been just biding their time, getting some works in him, keeping him ready, 
And if he shows up in the mat win, I would consider him a contender if he can get enough pace help. He likes to run from off the pace. I think he's going to get better as the year goes on, but we don't know quite his quality yet. But I like the pedigree. Honor code, uh, good sire there. Stamina on the damn side. So max player is one that you're probably going to want to keep an eye on. As I mentioned, if you want to read my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports, uh, you can see those at therunawayhorse.com and just go into the description in this video. I'll have the description there. Uh, in the description, I'll have links uh, to my derby page. I'll also have links to free picks at therunawayhorse.com. On my California page, I'm going to have daily free picks from either uh, Santa Anita Park or um, Golden Gate Fields from California. Uh, so they started again uh, on May 14th, my free picks, and I'm going to continue to post those from one of those other tracks, at least one play per day. And my full card analysis from Santa Anita Park is back in action as well. I've got the link in the description if you're interested in that from Santa Anita. I cover full cards each day. It's nice to have them back in action and my Southern California full cards are back on the roll again. So, And also, and then one other place, at, the run, at horseracingnation.com, I play, post daily free plays um, my best bet blog there. So if you're interested in that, again, that will be also uh, the link in this description. You can see my daily free plays uh, from that site as well. So that will wrap up this look at the Kentucky Derby, uh, the 2020 Kentucky Derby. I'll be back next week. I'll probably do a preview of the Matt Wynn stakes, and then we'll talk about any other Kentucky Derby news along the way. But until then, good luck at the races and stay safe out there.